Oh, hi. Congratulations. You are now the proud owner of Deal Emil. Well, there's so many things in the box. That's why I made this video, so we could go over everything together. Now, before we get started, I want to talk about my favorite subject, and maybe yours too, and that is food. I love food. It's as simple as that. I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it. I love the feel of it. I love it warm. I love it cold. But I especially love it fried. I can eat it any time. I can eat when I'm happy, sad, lonely, bored, depressed, and upset. I can eat through any and all of my emotions because I'm a compulsive eater. Always have been, always will be. Now, some say that this passion for food is a disease. Well, I just don't buy that. Here's how I look at it. God made two kinds of people, those who love food and those who don't. Loving food a lot comes with a curse. It's called the fat curse. You go from being chubby to overweight and maybe even to obese. When you love food too much, it does take control of your life. You know that. Then before you know it, you're on that diet roller coaster. You try all these diets. You lose, you gain, you stop, you start, and then you finally screw up your metabolism, feel rotten, and give up. Now, hey, now, wait, 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 wait. Don't think this is just happening to you. There's an estimated 50 million men, 60 million women, and 12 million teenagers who are overweight in America today. So you can see there are a lot of people who are battling with this food thing. I know because over the last couple of decades, I have received hundreds of thousands of letters from overweight people. I've talked to people who have 15 to 20 pounds to lose and it's driving them nuts. And I've talked to people who have two and 300 pounds to lose. You see, it's not how fat you are. It's the damage that the fat does to you emotionally and physically. Where there is too much fat, there's a lot of health problems and you know what I'm talking about. Your back hurts. Your feet hurts, your knees hurt. Wherever you're carrying the extra weight, you're doing damage. And those are just the hurts that you can feel. Don't forget about all the hurt you're doing to your heart and your lungs, your other vital organs, and your circulation. The extra fat puts a strain on the work your body has to do every single day. Well, so far we've talked about the physical effects of being overweight. Now let's talk about what this extra weight does to you emotionally. You don't like what you look like in the mirror. And you can't find clothes that look good on you. And you know this society as well as I do. For the most part, fat people are treated differently. I know you can relate to this. And that's why I'm glad you've gotten the deal meal. Because today, I'm going to teach you how to eat so you can lose the weight that you need to lose and create a brand new healthy you. Now let's see what we have in our box here. Open up your box and let's go over everything. First, you're gonna find the deal a meal food cards and the deal a meal wallet. Then you should have a set of menu cards, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. You should find a booklet called Dealing America's Favorite Foods. I've also put in a Project Me passport. We'll get to this later. I know you have the video because you're watching it. And last but not least, you should have your deal a meal instructional manual. Now, before we get started, I, I want to talk about just one other thing real quick. It is true you may have inherited your body shape and a few fat genes from the family tree. But you can do something about losing this extra fat. Your weight loss starts with a great plan and some realistic goals. So how many of you would like to weigh 105 pounds? Raise your hands. Wait, 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 wait. I hate to burst your bubble, but everyone in the world can't weigh between 105 and 110 pounds. Bodies come in many different shapes and sizes, and it's totally unrealistic to think that everyone can be a perfect size five. I'm not. I don't want you to compare yourself with anybody else out there. I want you to find out what you should weigh. I want you to get down to a weight that feels right for you, where you feel comfortable and well. But before we can find out what you should weigh, you need to know how much you weigh right now. So before you do anything, I want you to go this very minute and weigh yourself. 
But wait, I need you to weigh yourself without clothes and without shoes. This is very important for you to know what you weigh right now. So put the tape on hold, and I'll be right here. You won't miss a thing. Oh, and when you come back, could you bring a pen? Okay, so now that you know what you weigh, turn to page five in your instructional manual. You should be looking at the healthy weight chart for men and women. This is the most up-to-date height weight chart available. Now we're going to find out what a healthy, realistic weight will be for you. First, you need to find your height in the left-hand column. Then if your age is between 19 and 34, you will find your healthy weight in the first column. And if you're over 35, you'll look in the second column. To make you feel more comfortable about your commitment to lose weight, I've invited Beth to join us. Say hi to everybody, Beth. Beth is going to fill out everything in the instructional manual with you. She is five foot four and is 37 years old, and right now she weighs 185 pounds. So her goal is to weigh somewhere between 122 pounds and 157 pounds. Now there's a big gap between those two numbers, 122 and 157. Beth has a medium frame, so we're going to put her at a realistic goal weight at 140 pounds. That's about midway between the two numbers. So using your best judgment, I want you to figure out your realistic goal weight. Now I hope you remember to bring your pen because it's time to fill in your deal a meal goal weight chart on page six. Thanks. Beth, are you ready to fill in your chart? Good. And are you ready to fill in your chart? Write down your starting weight. Then the goal weight you figured out for yourself. Now subtract your goal weight from your starting weight, and that will tell you how many pounds of fat you must lose. Now that you have that number at hand, let's turn to page eight and make this legal. That's right, it's a contract to show that you're really serious about this commitment. So pick up that pen again and let's fill this page out. Print your name, your current weight, and how much you plan to lose. Now write in why you really want to lose this weight. Then sign your contract and date it. I hope you did this. Signing this is a very big step. Don't take this lightly. You haven't sold your soul to the devil, but you've made a contract and you've given me and yourself your word. Now that it's official, it's time to learn Deal a Meal. Now, I want you to get out your deal a meal cards and your wallet. Now, you're going to notice that the cards are different colors to represent the different food groups. Now, I know you've been on diets in the past where you've cut out certain food groups or you've eaten primarily one food group, but deal a meal is different because it's based on balance. I believe you need the right portions of all of the six food groups in order to lose fat and stay healthy at the same time. Now, in case you've forgotten the food groups, let's go over them now. Here is your red card, and it is your protein card. You need protein every day in order to renew and repair the tissues that make up your body. Each protein card is worth about 75 calories. Here is your brown card, and it's called the starch card. You need starch every day mainly for energy, but for fiber too. Each item on the starch card is worth about 80 calories. Next is your blue dairy card. Dairy products give you protein and calcium, as well as some important vitamins. Each time you use your dairy card, you're using approximately 90 calories. Next, we have the green vegetable card. Vegetables are important because they provide a lot of the essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber you need every day. Each vegetable card is worth about 25 calories. 
The pink card is your fruit card. Fruit gives you vitamins, minerals, and fiber, plus a boost of energy from the natural sugar. Fruit is nature's own dessert. Each fruit card is worth about 60 calories. Ah, the fat card, the yellow card, that's your fat card. While it's true that you should cut way down on your fat intake, it is still important for you to get some fat from your food on a daily basis. A healthy body needs fat to protect and cradle its vital organs and to provide some insulation. So although there's a lot of pressure to eat non-fat and low-fat foods, the bottom line is that you still need some fat in your eating program even while you're losing weight. Each time you use your fat card, it costs you about 45 calories, which is about 5 grams of fat. So there you have it, the six food groups, protein, starch, dairy, vegetables, fruit, and fat. You need to eat from all of these food groups every day for your body to work properly and lose weight at the same time. Now you can also find two other cards that I've added. This is the gray card, and it's called the joker card. This is your wild card for some extra treats. Each joker card is worth about 30 calories. The last card is the purple card. We call this one the freebie card. You can eat as much as you like of most of the foods on this card, except for coffee, tea, and diet sodas. I want you to limit your intake of caffeine and artificial sweeteners. Now, for your first week on deal -a meal everyone starts out at 1,000 calories. Now, I know a lot of you have tried weight loss programs where you ate just 500 or 800 calories a day. Well, those days are gone. When the calories are that low, you are literally starving yourself, and we don't want you to do that. You're not going to starve to lose weight like you might have done in the past. Every doctor I have talked to and some of the leading dietitians and nutritionists agree with me that 1,000 calories for the first week is a good place to start. But after those first seven days, you will be moved to a personal plan that will fit your individual needs. Now turn to page 11 and let's find out where you fit in on this daily caloric intake chart. There are four plans to choose from. Plan one is for you if you weigh 150 pounds or less. If you're a woman, you'll increase your daily food intake to 1,200 calories. And if you're a man, you will move up to 1,400 calories. Plan two is for you if you weigh between 150 and 200 pounds. Your caloric intake will be 1,400 calories for women and 1,600 calories for men. If you weigh between 200 and 250 pounds, you will be on plan three, which means that women get 1,600 calories a day and men will get 1,800 calories. And finally, plan four is for those of you who weigh 250 pounds or more. You will get 1,800 calories a day if you're a woman and 2,000 calories a day if you're a man. Now, Beth is 185 pounds, so she is on plan two, which means that after her first week at 1,000 calories, she will move up to 1,400 calories. Look at your daily caloric intake chart once again. Now, pay attention because this is very important. As you start to lose weight and get down into a whole different weight range, then you will move into the matching plan. For instance, Beth is starting out after her first week on plan two. When she gets down to 150 pounds, she'll go to plan one. When Beth gets to her goal weight, she'll graduate to a maintenance plan, but we'll get to that later. For now, what you need to focus on is which plan and caloric intake level you will go to after your first 1,000 calorie week. Is it plan one? Take a look now. Plan two? Plan three or plan four. Okay, now it's time to set up your wallet for your very first week on deal -a meal We're starting off now today, this very minute. I promise you will not feel punished or hungry if you eat the right portions from all of the six food groups. So let's put 1,000 calories worth of cards in your deal -a meal wallet. Turn to page 12 in your manual for your daily caloric card limit chart. Look at the 1,000 calorie day and let's follow along with Beth as she sets up her wallet. You'll get three red protein cards, 
three brown starch cards, two blue dairy cards, three green vegetable cards, two pink fruit cards, three yellow fat cards, one gray joker card, and your purple freebie card. Hey, that was easy. Now I'm going to walk you through a 1,000 calorie day. Let's start with breakfast. Now the starch card says I can have one half a cup of cereal. This is what one half a cup of cereal looks like. I'm going to put some non-fat milk on this. Now my dairy card says that I get one cup of non-fat milk, so I'll put some on the cereal and I'll drink the rest later. My fruit card says I can have one half a banana, so I'm going to slice this and put this on my cereal like this. I'm going to have a cup of tea, and that's my complete breakfast. Let's pull the card, shall we, Beth? For a half a cup of cereal, we're moving one starch card to the breakfast area. For the one cup of non-fat milk, we're moving one dairy card. And here is a fruit card for the sliced half banana. Tea is on the freebie card, and remember, you may only have two servings daily from this limited category on your freebie card. Well, that was breakfast. <gasps> it's time to plan some lunch. How about a sandwich? Wow, on the starch card, you can have one slice of regular bread or two pieces of thin sliced bread. So let's have that. A tuna sandwich sounds good. One protein card buys me one quarter cup of water-packed tuna. And with one fat card, I can mix in one tablespoon of diet mayonnaise. I'll use some lettuce and sliced cucumbers for my freebie card. And from my vegetable card, I'm going to choose one medium tomato sliced. I like to sprinkle a little vinegar for my freebie card. And if you like mustard, that's free too. Oh, and I'm going to have a diet cola. So let's pull those cards for our lunch. We have one starch card for the two pieces of thin sliced bread. One protein card for the one quarter cup of water packed tuna. One fat card for the tablespoon of diet mayonnaise. And one vegetable card for the medium sliced tomato. The lettuce, the cucumbers, vinegar, and mustard are all freebies. Now don't forget that your diet cola is your second and last choice for today from your limited freebie items. So let's move that freebie card over now so that we can keep track. Now let's look at our dinner menu. For dinner, I'm going to make a stir fry with two cups of chopped assorted vegetables. I'm using celery, carrots, broccoli, onions, and mushrooms. This will cost me two vegetable cards. Now I still have two protein cards left, so I'm adding two ounces of cubed skin chicken. I'm gonna saute the vegetables and chicken in one teaspoon of sesame oil and serve that over a half a cup of rice. I'm adding a little low sodium soy sauce to season my stir fry, and I'm making a salad from the freebie card using lettuce, spinach, parsley, and sprouts. Then with my last fat card of the day, I'm adding two tablespoons of low calorie dressing. Now I still have two cards left for dessert. I'm gonna have one cup of strawberries from the fruit card and a half a cup of non-fat frozen yogurt from the dairy card. Here they are. So now let's move these cards to the right side of the wallet. Two vegetable cards for the two cups of vegetables. Two protein cards for the two ounces of skinned chicken. One fat card for the teaspoon of sesame oil. One starch card for the half a cup of rice. And one fat card for the two tablespoons of low calorie dressing that I'm having over the freebie salad. Now you need to move over your secondary card for the half cup of frozen yogurt and one fruit card for the one cup of strawberries. As you can see, there are no cards left except for this one. It's your gray joker card. So later on, I'm going to have one cup of air pop popcorn for a snack. When I move this card over, I will have used up all my cards for the day, which means I've used up 1,000 calories in all the right portions that my body needed. So there you have it, 1,000 calories, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack.
A balanced day of healthy food. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? Hey, it wasn't a plate of chicken ribs and french fries. But it wasn't starvation either. Now remember, you can only stay on a thousand calories for one week. That is seven days. Once you completed your seven days on a thousand calories a day, it's time to reset your wallet to fit your personalized weight loss plan. Since Beth is on plan two, she is now going to reset her wallet for 1,400 calories. She will now get four red protein cards, five brown starch cards, two blue dairy cards, four green vegetable cards, four pink fruit cards, three yellow fat cards, one gray joker card, and the freebie card. So we're now going to put together a 1400 calorie day for you. It's breakfast time. I feel like having a poached egg this morning, which will cost me a protein card. I'm gonna have a toasted English muffin. This will take two starch cards, since each card can buy you one half of an English muffin. So to eat the whole thing, top and bottom, it will cost you two starch cards. I'm gonna have two teaspoons of diet margarine on the muffin. That will cost me a fat card. And I think I'd like a tablespoon of honey, which will cost me one fruit card. A cup of coffee sounds like a good finishing touch. That, of course, is a freebie card. So let's pull these cards for this breakfast. One protein card for the poached egg. Two starch cards for the English muffin. One fat card for the two teaspoons of diet margarine. And one fruit card for the one tablespoon of honey. and one freebie card for the coffee. Now how about a mid-morning snack of a six ounce glass of V8 juice? Don't forget to move over one vegetable card for that. Now it's time for lunch. Why don't we have a half a cup of non-fat cottage cheese for one dairy card. We'll serve it in a third of a medium cantaloupe with three quarters of a cup of blueberries, which will take two of our fruit cards, and three graham cracker squares for a starch card. Now, for a beverage, I'm going to have a glass of sparkling mineral water. So let's pull those cards now. One dairy card for the cottage cheese, two fruit cards for the fruit, and one starch card for the graham cracker. Well, it's mid-afternoon. I think I'll have a crisp, crunchy snack of a cup of celery and carrot slices. Oh, and I'll have a glass of iced tea as well. That will use up my second option on the limited items on the freebie card. So move over one vegetable card for the vegetables and a freebie card. For dinner, I think I'll have a three ounce skin bone chicken breast. That sounds perfect. That will use up my last three protein cards. A small baked potato will be good for that one starch card, and we'll add two tablespoons of sour cream for the one fat card. A small dinner roll will cost me one more starch card, and a half a cup of cooked green beans will use up my one vegetable card. For my last fat card, I'm going to use two teaspoons of diet margarine. I'm going to use one teaspoon of it on the beans and the remaining teaspoon on the dinner roll. I'm also going to have a salad using a cup of chopped fresh vegetables from the vegetable card. I'm going to have some tomatoes, green onions, mushrooms and celery, and some lettuce from the freebie card. For dressing, I'm going to use one quarter cup of fat-free dressing from the joker card. Well, it's time to pull the cards for dinner. Three protein cards for the three ounces of chicken breast, two starch cards for the small baked potato and the small dinner roll, two fat cards for the two tablespoons of sour cream and the two teaspoons of diet margarine, two vegetable cards for the cup of raw vegetables in the salad, and the half a cup of cooked green beans. Oh, and don't forget to move over your joker card for the fat-free dressing. Before bed, I'm going to have an eight-ounce glass of non-fat milk 
and 12 chilled grapes. This will use up my second dairy card and my last fruit card for the day. So here we have 1,400 calories, a lot of food. Breakfast, a snack, lunch, a snack, dinner, and a snack. Are you getting the hang of this? Do you understand the philosophy behind deal -a meal When you've eaten something and you've moved that card over, you're taking responsibility for the food you were eating. deal -a meal is like your own little personal calculator, making sure you get the right amount of food every day to get you closer to your goal. Have you figured out the secret of this deal -a meal plan yet? Without a doubt, it's portions. Well, you understand the food groups and how to move the cards in your wallet when you eat. Now I want you to understand how to accurately weigh and measure your food to make sure you're eating the correct amount. A lot of people like to eyeball what they're eating, but as you know, people have different sized eyeballs. So I suggest you need the following items in your kitchen. First, you need a good scale and a set of measuring cups and measuring spoons. Let's weigh and measure some of the items on your cards so you can see the portion sizes for yourself. Now here are some of the items from your protein card. This is what one ounce of cheese looks like as a slice and as a cube. I know it's one ounce because I weighed it on my scale. Now on your protein card it says five medium shrimp. Now here's a little teeny bitty shrimp. I'm not talking about these shrimps. deal -a meal is not a cruel thing. This is a medium shrimp, and you get to have five of those. And here is a three-ounce piece of lean steak. See how important your scale is? You can't know how much something weighs without a scale. Now let's take a look at some of the items on your starch card. This is one small corn on the cob. It looks like this. Now here we have one half cup of pasta and here one half cup of rice. Take a good look at these portions. Of course you may have more pasta and rice, but you need to count more cards. It's all a matter of keeping track. Now for the dairy foods, you need a liquid measuring cup so you can measure one cup of milk without it spilling over the top. You can measure yogurt in a regular measuring cup like this. Next. Let's look at your vegetable card. It says for the most part, one cup raw or one half cup cooked. In most cases, it's easy to measure your vegetables when they're raw, so you can use the measuring cup. Here is a cup of raw broccoli. Now asparagus really get ruined if you squash them into the cup, so just count out eight spears like this. Now here I have one cup of carrots and celery. I place them in the cup like this and I chop off the top. Now the fruit card, some of these items like berries and juice can be measured and you'll need a tablespoon to accurately measure things like honey, jam, or syrup. It must be a level measurement. But how can, how can you measure a small apple? Is this small? How about this one? Ah, this must be it. This is one fruit card for one small apple. You can see that you're going to have to use your own judgment quite a bit. Now, finally, and perhaps most important of all, <sighs> is this yellow fat card. The main reason people are fat is because they eat too much fat. This is where you'll make it or break it, so listen and look real close, because this is the key. If you're using regular mayonnaise, you get one teaspoon. That's it. That's the size. If you decide to go for diet mayonnaise, you get this size, one tablespoon. Now when you're reading a recipe, this is the abbreviation for teaspoon, a little T or a TSP. And this is the abbreviation for tablespoon, a big T or a big TBSP. Don't get your teaspoons and your tablespoons mixed up. Now, butter, margarine, or any oil is one teaspoon for one fat card. That's it. Now you can get one tablespoon of salad dressing or two tablespoons of low-cal salad dressing, but either way, it is not a lot. You might even know what lettuce actually tastes like. 
Let's look at the fat cord with some other items. You get six nuts or one eighth of an avocado for one fat cord. Also, one slice of bacon crisply cooked and drained is one fat cord. But wait, look at the card. There's also alcohol in the fat card because believe it or not, your body metabolizes alcohol kind of like fat. So it seems the best card to put it on. But where do you see the serving sizes? This is three quarters of an ounce of scotch. Better get out that magnifying glass. This is half the amount you get when you order, say, a scotch and soda. So for such a drink like a scotch and soda, you would have to count two fat cards. Here is what two ounces of red wine looks like. That's right. Two ounces. That's a fat card. Four ounces of light beer. Four ounces is a fat card. If you want more, then drink the non-alcoholic beer because you get eight ounces of that. Do me a favor. Get familiar with the portions on this fat card so that you can recite them from memory. Stick to these measurements and you're well on your way to success. Now for the Joker card, most of it's very straightforward. See, you get like six frozen grapes, or you get a rice cake, or a teaspoon of peanut butter in a long celery stick. But what about those non-fat items that say up to four tablespoons? That's one quarter of a cup. Well, it's true. You can have up to one quarter cup of non-fat sour cream if you want to. But I'd prefer you to get used to having smaller portions and not picking out just because something is non-fat. I want you to be eating healthier. And sometimes those non-fat items in the stores have quite a few chemicals in them. So it's up to you to read the labels and decide. Now, finally, the freebie card. Remember to limit yourself to two servings total from the coffee, tea, and diet soda group. Now, when I say a little ketchup, I mean watch it. Don't be drowning your food in ketchup. Those calories add up. For the rest, get lots of flavorful natural herbs and spices. Try out some different mustards and vinegars. And if you're still hungry and you've used up all your cards, you can always have a salad using freebie veggies with some salsa and vinegar. Your freebie card can be a lifesaver. So read it thoroughly and make full use of it. So now you understand how to accurately weigh and measure your food. Those who successfully lose weight in a slow, healthy way are the ones who are measuring and weighing what they eat. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for you to learn portion control. Maybe this will help you a little bit. This is the size of your stomach. Yes, that's right. Your stomach is the size of your cupped hands. Think about that next time you're faced with a plate overflowing with food, because what you put in your mouth go straight down to your stomach. So be kind to your stomach and feed it with smaller portions. Now I want you to get out your beautiful, full-colored laminated menu cards. I've given you here an assortment of breakfast ideas, lunches, dinner suggestions, and delicious snacks. These are inexpensive, easy to make meals. Use them as a guide during your first few weeks on Deal a Meal and later as a stepping stone to your own menu ideas. You'll see that these menus are all very basic. The more basic your meals, the less you have to worry about hidden fats. Oh, and talk about hidden fats. Oy, yay, yay. Our next subject is... Hey, let's see what's hidden in some of your favorite foods. So you find yourself in a Mexican restaurant and you order their famous tostada. After all, it's just a salad. But is it? We'll break it down and see. First, we have this humongous tortilla shell, and of course, it is deep fried. I said deep fried. You know what a deep fryer looks like. They actually drown this whole tortilla in a vat of boiling oil so that it soaks up enough fat to cost you at least three fat cards. The tortilla itself is so big, it's going to cost you three starch cards. And we've only just begun. The first thing they add to the tortilla is a couple of spoonfuls of refried beans. There's that fried word again. That's going to be two protein cards for the beans and another two fat cards for the refried part. Then you have either ground beef or shredded chicken. That's another two to three protein cards. The lettuce, of course, is free. Yay! But wait, there's shredded cheese, guacamole, and sour cream. 
So another protein card for the cheese as well as the fat card, and even more fat cards for the guacamole and the sour cream. So what might start out as an innocent salad turns into a deep fried disaster for your body. See, this is the total number of cards that this tostada would cost you. The solution is to become a food detective. Learn where that hidden fat is and steer away from it as much as you can. Now, how would you break down a plate of sweet and sour pork in a Chinese restaurant? Well, first of all, you're probably getting at least three ounces of pork, so that's three protein cards. Now, the coating has flour in it, so that would be a couple of bread cards. And it's deep fried, so there you go, at least three more fat cards. But wait, that's not all. The sour part isn't the problem. It's the sweet part we have to worry about. That sugar, which you'll find on the fruit card. Sometimes there's pineapple in there too, so count two fruit cards. So here are the cards you would have to count for this one dish. Can you see how all these calories add up? Well, to help you even further, I have created a little book called Dealing America's Favorite Foods. Here in this booklet, I have cookies, candies, cakes, fast foods, so you can see at a glance the breakdown of some of your favorite foods. Right here on the first page is a Big Mac. Look, you have to count three starch cards, two protein cards, and six fat cards. Now we know why it's called the Big Mac. Now, how about some candy? Here's a 1.7 ounce packet of my favorite M&Ms. This is gonna cost you three fat cards and two fruit cards. Remember, sugar counts on your fruit card. How about this cute little chocolate chip cookie? Huh? Just one chocolate chip cookie will cost you one starch card, two fat cards, and two fruit cards. Maybe now you're starting to see how you gained all that extra weight in the first place. But look how much you've learned already from just watching this video. You understand what you weigh and realistically how much you have to lose. You know about the six food groups and you know how to move the cards in your wallet. You know how to weigh and measure and you know portions. So the big question is, how do I stay on deal a meal? You know that if you want to lose weight, you have to plan it. To be successful on deal a meal, you need to make meal planning a priority. I guess it gets down to, what are you willing to do? Every day there are different places to make food choices. You don't eat all your meals at home. Sometimes you eat at a friend's home. Sometimes you're in a restaurant. It's just so hard. Here are some key things you should do if you're serious about staying on deal a meal and losing that fat. Don't keep a lot of junk in the house. That is, if you live alone. You can't deprive your family of what they want to eat. You have to find the strength to look at this food and just say no. Now, getting on the scale will help you stay on deal a meal because as you feel better and look better, the results will show on the numbers on the scale. For now, maybe you just want to weigh in once a week or once every two weeks. Just make sure your weigh-in days are part of the overall plan and stick to it. When you're in the supermarket, take your list. If you're truly planning your meals, you should know the items that you need. And for gosh sake, open your eyes. Look at those labels. Look at what's in the food you're buying. If there's a lot of fat in it, put it back on the shelf. You don't need to be feeding your fat. But you do need to be drinking your water. Water is one of life's most essential nutrients. We can live for a while without food, but we can't live without water. And guess what? Oh! It's unlimited, no cards to count. So drink as much as your body desires. One of the best ways to stay on deal a meal is to eat slowly. Make mealtime special. Stopping for food shouldn't be like running an errand. Make it an occasion. Give yourself time to taste whatever you're eating and give your body a chance to digest it. I don't have to tell you that food is one of life's greatest pleasures, so savor those mealtime moments. You will always be faced with temptation. There are days you'll want to throw your cards out of the window and eat one of these. I'm not going to tell you how many cards are in one of these because you'll faint. But don't panic over melted ice cream. If you've fallen off the deal a meal wagon, if you've slipped up in your card counting, don't wait until tomorrow. Get those cards back in action for your very next meal. You know, losing weight is a lot like riding a bike. 
If you fall off, you just have to get back on. Please don't be hard on yourself. Believe me, this takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. Eating healthy takes some getting used to. And there are going to be times when even though you get an A in eating, the numbers on the scale won't budge. This is called a plateau. And practically everyone goes through them. Don't give up. You'll get through it. Sometimes it takes a little time for your body to catch up with it. If you just keep doing the right thing, eventually that scale will reward you. And for goodness sake, don't isolate yourself because you're on deal meal. You're still in the real world when you're on deal meal. Another great way to stay with the program is to share it. You didn't gain this weight alone. You were surrounded by family and friends and coworkers. Let them know what you're doing and let them see what you're doing. Their support will keep you going in the right direction. Once you've mastered deal a meal, the weight will come off slowly and safely. And the day will come when you will get on that scale and wow, you have reached your goal. Now your realistic goal weight should come with the cushion. When Beth gets down to her goal weight of 140 pounds, she should give herself a five pound cushion either way. Now I don't want you to get lazy on me. You still have to practice the principles of the deal -a meal concept. Don't put those measuring cups and spoons away. Correct portions are still important for maintaining your new weight. And you still need to get on that scale. You know, I work very hard at maintaining my weight. And just to make sure that I do, I hop on the scale every morning and check out the numbers. And you should too. Getting on the scale every day may be scary to you, especially after a big dinner, but work out a schedule and do it. Don't ever let two weeks go by without weighing in. Since we're talking about maintenance, turn to page 20 in your instructional manual so we can look at the food guide pyramid together. The United States Department of Agriculture has put this out to show us the perfect weight maintenance plan. And wouldn't you know it, it says deal a meal all over it. At the base of the pyramid, it shows that you can have from 6 to 11 servings from the starch group. Then, up in the next level, it suggests 3 to 5 servings of vegetables and from 2 to 4 servings of fruit. Up on the next level, we see 2 to 3 servings of dairy products and two to three servings of protein. Now I have to explain something here. On your deal a meal cards, a serving of protein is one ounce. On the food pyramid, one serving is three ounces. So when you translate that, it just means that you can have from six ounces to nine ounces of protein a day. At the peak of the pyramid for the fat group, it just says use sparingly. In other words, stay with the portion control you've learned on deal a meal. Maintenance is something you'll learn by trial and error. Use your own best judgment with the number of servings you should have each day and let the scale tell you how you're doing. Now, let's say you slip. You put on a few too many pounds. Don't waste another minute. Get out those deal meal cards again. Watch this video again. Read your instructional manual from cover to cover and look especially hard at your contract. Get right back on deal meal until you get back to your goal weight. You know too much about the right way to eat to never give up now. You know how good it feels to be at a good, healthy weight. So you just have to hang in there no matter what. And now, one of the main ways to keep your fighting weight is to exercise. So let's talk a little about sweating. Now, the deal -a meal program does work without exercise. By lowering your calories and your fat intake, you will lose weight. The first few times I tried weight loss programs, it was without exercise, and I did lose the weight. But at the age of 28, I started exercising, and I got hooked. Exercise has helped me maintain my goal weight. The exercise helps me in a way to stay true to my portions, because now I look at the food and say, how much exercise do I have to do to get this out of my body? So I highly recommend that you add some sort of an exercise program to this very major lifestyle change. Now I know, I know some of you have never exercised before. Start slow. That's my best advice. If you love walking, start taking those walks. If you love dancing, put on one of my sweating tapes and do as much as you can. If you have any physical limitations, 
work around them. If your legs don't work that well, then get that upper body working. Besides making your body function better to burn fat, exercise has so many other benefits. It strengthens your heart. It makes you less hungry, increases your energy, helps you sleep better, reduces the tension and stress, tones up your muscles so you look better. I, I mean, the list is endless. Once you start, you'll know what I mean. It makes a difference to just about all other aspects of your life. Now, we've been talking about physical exercise for the body, but there are mental exercises as well. These are the exercises that I promise will keep you motivated. The key element in making this whole program work is having a positive mental attitude. And let's face it, a lot of you just don't have one. You have got to be positive. You have to keep telling yourself that you're ready, willing, and able to make this change. You also have to dig deep inside yourself and find that strength to keep going. When you get down and depressed, just turn to page 24 of your instructional manual and you'll find some positive pick-me-ups. Don't wait for someone else to pick you up. You do it. Now, I want you to start deal a meal right now. Right now, don't go putting everything back in the box. Start while all this is still fresh in your mind. You should feel sort of excited and maybe a little nervous. You're at the beginning of a life-changing journey. I created deal a meal 10 years ago and have worked closely with nutritionists, dietitians, and doctors to keep up with all the latest research in the field of nutrition. And I am happy to tell you that you have the very latest, most up-to-date version of deal a meal in keeping with the standards set by the experts for safe and effective weight loss. <laughs> now, I know you would love to lose this weight overnight, but in the past, when you've done something drastic like that to lose weight fast, you know what happens? You gain the weight right back. Losing all your weight fast is out. Those days of losing five to eight pounds a week were very misleading because you weren't losing five to eight pounds of fat. You were losing a lot of water and maybe some lean muscle tissue. All the research now says that if you want this weight to stay off, you should lose it slowly. So next time you lose just a quarter of a pound or half a pound, don't say, this weight is not coming off fast enough, Richard. Say, wow. I lost a quarter of a pound of pure fat. That's the amount of fat in a stick of butter. All those sticks of butter coming off slowly and surely will eventually lead you right down to your goal weight. Remember that word, patience. Oh, one other bit of advice I'd like to leave you with. You must put yourself first if you want this program to work. I know there's a lot going on in your life, but your health has to come first. You have to make time for this. I know you're saying, I don't have time to take care of myself. Please make time, or you'll run out of time. I know you can do this. You might think it's going to take a lot of willpower, but somebody told me recently that won't power works even better. I won't put this dressing all over my salad. I won't eat another cookie. I won't let this day go by without some exercise. I won't let anyone or anything stop me from reaching my goal weight. You get the idea? So now I, I hope you understand everything I have put in the box for you. You will get out of this program what you put into this program. So now, remember that little Project Me passport? Get it out now. I read this passport every morning when I get up, so I will feel prepared and focused on my goals for this lifetime plan I'm on. A dear friend of mine recently wrote me a letter, and I want to leave you with this line. She says, I am responsible today for how I look and feel tomorrow. So today, please put your heart your soul, your guts, and your goals into creating the new you. It's time to start, Deal Emil. Now is the time to make that commitment to change, so grab hold of your wallet and cards and deal your way to health. Please keep in touch and, and let me know how you're doing. God bless. Uh-uh-uh, 
and I don't touch that VCR because we have exciting news for you. If you're one of the millions of people who have joined the workout fun of the original Sweat to the Oldies, well, we're going to give you a sequel that's got no equal. It's Sweat to the Oldies 2, and it's now available wherever videotapes are sold. The Oldies 2 is set in a funky 50s diner, and it's filled with fun, fun, fun. You'll dance your pounds away with 10 of your favorite golden oldies played by my very own sweatin' band. Plus, you'll meet more terrific people in all shapes and sizes who are there to work out with you. Bring it up is hard to is a one-hour class that includes a warm-up, 25 minutes of low-impact aerobics, plus exercises to strengthen your arms, flatten your tummy, and tighten your bun. Join me and my friends as we stretch, dance, and have a ball with Sweatin' to the Oldies 2. Yeah! Wait, 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 don't hit that stop button yet. There's more Sweatin' coming your way. Royce, it's Sweatin' time! All right, let's hit it! Available now for the very first time is Sweat to the Oldies 3. Yahoo! Want to dance? Want to sweat? Want to turn your body into a fat-burning machine? Then let me take you to Sweatin' Land, my locale amusement park, where me and my friends will take your heart on a roller coaster ride and your hips through the tunnel of love. to play hot music while you jam. So, if you're born to be wild, lace up your sneakers and get ready to sweat like you've never sweat before. I'm gonna build you up, buttercup. <laughs> so remember, look for Sweatin' to the Oldies 2 and Sweatin' to the Oldies 3 wherever videotapes are sold. <laughs> Ah, you're gonna love them.